I want to continue uh, with the topic of uh, drag uh, or air resistance. This is what we were looking at at the end of last class. Um, basically, as something falls, uh, as an object falls, it has to push on the air. As things fall, they push on the air, right? And the air pushes back. And this is basically what we call drag. And this would be an example of Newton's third law. That makes sense. So it's like a it's like a reaction force, right? The re I'm standing on the ground. The ground is pushing up on me. My weight's pushing on the ground. My acceleration is zero because I'm not moving. The balance, it's a balance of forces. If you're falling through the sky, after a few, maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds, you're also not accelerating anymore. It's a balance of forces. But I can feel the ground beneath me the same as a skydiver can feel the air pushing on them, but they're not accelerating. But that doesn't mean they're not moving. You can have zero acceleration, but you can have constant velocity. In fact, if you have constant velocity, you will have zero acceleration. So it's a bit of a recap. Here's a, this could be a raindrop. We've had this last time, but I may add a bit more to it. And it's falling through the air. This is supposed to represent air, which has a lot of mass. Uh, and it has the raindrop has a weight, mg, and there's a drag force. Drag force, we use the symbol Fd. So the drag force is the force of the air on the raindrop. So for the raindrop, or for anything really, which has a mass m, mass m, we can just write f equals ma vertically. We assume there are no horizontal forces. I mean, you could have wind, right? R snow doesn't always fall but straight down. Snow can fall um, at an angle. You may notice when it's snowing that the bigger snowdrops fall faster. If you watch carefully, the little ones kind of float. They don't go as fast, but the big ones come right down faster. So the big ones come faster. The reason being that it's, there's a stronger drag, so they have to go faster to balance the drag. So if we just write F equals MA, we would have FD minus MG is equal to MA. And this is yes, just a bit like yesterday or the other day, half CD rho A V squared minus MG equals MA. And then we divide by M. And that will give us that A equals C, D, rho, A, V squared over um, 2M minus G. All right, just a simple bit of algebra. Well, something I want to point out here it's about, I want to talk a little bit, let's keep that there for a second. Uh, a is called the cross-sectional or frontal area. Cross-sectional area. So it's the area that, of the object if you took a photograph of it. Let me give you an example which I've, I thought about, I was thinking about this today. Maybe this helps. If you had a parachute, 
So you're, you're skydiving and your parachute's gone off. It, it looks a bit like this. Uh, you have a head. This is a parachute. Is that clear to people? So the parachute area is actually this area, the cross-sectional area. A uh, equals pi r squared, where r would be the radius in this direction. It's, it's, if you could look up. It would be the area, it would be the area, not the whole area of the parachute, but the cross-sectional area, which is pi r squared. And this would have, this would have Cd equal to around about 2, have a drag coefficient of about 2. Now, let's imagine we could have a parachute that looked like this. There's a method to the madness. So this parachute looks like this. This parachute, this one also has a equal to pi r squared, exactly the same, but this one has cd is 0.2. All right? You see the difference? One's going to go really fast, and one's going to go really slow. The one on the right is going to help you, it's going to reduce your speed to a few meters per second and get you to the ground nice and slowly. The one on the left, you're going to shoot down to the ground because it's much easier for the air to flow past this one. This one has a very low drag coefficient, but the cross-sectional area is the same. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the difference between uh, the, the frontal area and the, the different drag coefficients. Here we have the acceleration of the falling object with these coefficients. Um, at the start of the fall, at the start of the fall, we would have, which would be t equals zero, we would also have v equals zero, or velocity is zero. See, you just jumped out of plane. So at the start, you have v equals zero, which means you have a equals minus g. So you will accelerate fastest at the beginning. And then A will become less negative. All right? It's going to approach 0. Because it starts off as when you have V equals 0, you just have that. You have A equals minus G. Is that right? Thanks. So you would just have minus g here, right? And then what's going to happen, this is always going to be positive, apart from the fact it's v squared. I mean, it's a negative velocity because you're going downwards, but v squared means that that's a positive quantity. So this is just going to grow until these balance. So you could say that the magnitude of a will drop to 0. Drops to 0. And when it equals zero, you have v is equal to vt, which we call the terminal velocity. <coughs> that, would be, that would be the fastest, if you like, that something can fall at. It's a speed that it would, it would be its constant speed something's falling. So to figure out the formula for Vt, all we do is put a zero here and rearrange this equation. That's, I think that's pretty straightforward. I'll do that. So so putting a equals zero, if a equals zero, then we would have um, Make sure the wrong track. We'd have uh, C D rho A V squared over 2m equals G. And this V is now Vt because it has a fixed value. It's no longer a variable. It won't change anymore because the forces are now balanced and they would 
they stay balanced. So you can solve for vt squared. It's going to be 2mg divided by cd rho a, okay? And then you can just take the square root, which is going to give you vt equals the square root of 2mg divided by cd rho a, okay? It's a formula that I would give you in the exam, right? If we asked this in the exam, we would give you this formula. But you would typically need to estimate these things, m, cd, I would probably give you the value of cd, but you can look it up. You look up drag coefficient, all these tables come up. And it tells you what it's for a person, it tells you what it is for a raindrop, it tells you what it is for a feather. Rho is always going to be 1, because it's just a density of air near ground level. And A is going to depend on the object. Okay? 